For the past couple of lessons, we've been talking about two's complement and its ability to represent using a fixed number of bits, uh, negative numbers. Now, how does that work? Well, we are going to talk about a topic now called overflow. And overflow is important to consider because we want to know when we go outside of the bounds that are capable, that, that, are, that are integer, the, the, that those number of bits are capable of representing. Now, let's look a little, let's kind of look at a number line here, all right? So we've got a number line here, somewhere in the middle you have zero. Now, unsigned binary only capable of representing non-negative numbers, right? And it goes from zero up to some upper limit. And what is that upper limit? Well, that upper limit is defined by the number of bits we have. And if you remember our discussion with unsigned binary, that value was two to the n minus one. And whenever it comes to eight bits, n, excuse me, n being the number of bits, and when it comes to eight bits, this value is 255. So what happens is, is our eight bit value is capable of representing values from zero up to 255. Two to the n, two to the eighth, 256 minus the one, and that one, by the way, is the 256 is the number of possible patterns of ones and zeros we can have with eight bits, but one of those patterns is taken away because we've represented zero with it. So our maximum here is 255. Now the problem is, is that somewhere along here, we have a change from the most significant bit being zero to the most significant bit being one. And in two's complement, remember that most significant bit has a special purpose. It is our sign bit. And so this point right here and that point right there is two to the seventh minus one or 127. That point right there is, well, where we shift from going positive numbers and having two's complement map exactly equal to uh, unsigned binary to suddenly shifting around to a negative value because now that one is in that most significant bit position. So what we've got is the values in this range right here. Once we go from the most significant bit equaling zero and this last position right here in eight bits is zero, one, 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 which is 127. When we add one to that, we get this one, zero, 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 right? Now, how far can I go up? Well, as I'm counting up, I'm incrementing one, adding one at a time to this until we get up to one, 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 one. All right. Now, in two's complement arithmetic, remember addition works just fine. So when I'm adding one to this, I'm incrementing its value. Every time I add one, I'm incrementing the value. So it turns out that this value right here is probably a very negative value because as we're adding one and adding one, we're actually going up in the number line. And in fact, this number right here, 11111111, what happens when you add one to it? Well, when you add one to it, that becomes a zero, carry the one, that becomes a zero, carry the one, that becomes a zero, carry the one, and so forth. And the carries propagate all the way through, adding one to this actually becomes zero. Now, that in unsigned binary, means that I've gone from 255 to 256, which requires nine bits. How did I know this? Well, that carry propagated out the top, that would have been added to our ninth bit, which means that we had an unsigned overflow. I'll talk a little bit about this in a moment when I do some examples. But if this were two's complement and I added one to this, that would become zero, which means I would go to the center of my number line right here. So how does this work out mathematically? Well, remember our conversion process. I had a shortcut in the last lesson that we talked about, and that shortcut was a two-step process. You started out on the least significant bit side, starting on the right side, and you copy down all the zeros up to and including the first one you get to. 
If the first bit you get to is a 1, well, you just copy that guy down. In this case of this number, you copy down all the zeros up to and including the first one. All right. Now, this bit right here, after that, you convert, you invert all the rest of the bits. All right. So this right here is the negative. This right here is the positive. I know this seems a little odd, and this is the only case where this happens. But let's take a look at this pair first. This is a positive 1, which means in 2's complement representation, this is a negative 1, which makes sense because when you add negative 1 to 1, you get 0. So this 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1 is actually right there on the number line. Where is this guy on the number line? Well, this is the positive version of the, yeah, this. Yes, I know that I said that this is our sign bit. This odd case shows up only in this pattern of ones and zeros. And in fact, it works out mathematically. We'll show you in a, in, in a moment why it works out mathematically. But what you've got is that's the 128 position, which means this is negative 128. So if we do this on the number line, what we've got is that for two's complement, What we're looking at is this position right here is represented by the one followed by all zeros. All right. And in the case of eight bits, that is, this is the two to the seventh position. So it's two to the seventh, but negative. All right. So this is giving you a little bit of an idea of what we're headed toward with, toward with this lesson. Now, what I'd like to show you is if I add two positive numbers, Let's say that I've got two unsigned positive numbers that are in this range of the number line. If I add them together, two positive numbers are going to come up with a greater positive number. And so if I am looking at unsigned binary, unsigned binary, if I take two numbers and I add them together and go past my maximum, how do I know that? Well, the way I know that is I've generated a carry into the ninth bit, the ninth bit, which I don't have. All right. Two's complement overflow is a little different. <clears throat> if I have two positive numbers and I add them together, what happens is, is that they don't give a carry. Instead, what they do is they move from this range. So I'm adding two positive numbers here. They move into this range. So 127 plus 127, what is that? It's 254. So it doesn't go beyond in order to generate a carry. But what happens is if I add two positive numbers together and I get in this range right here, that means that I've got an overflow. How do I know I'm in this range? Remember that most significant bit will be a one. If I add two negative numbers, how does that become an overflow? Well, two negative numbers added together will go that way on the number line. And so two negative numbers will pass that way, which will bring them into this range, which will precede them with a zero. So if I have two negative numbers, both with ones in the sign bit, and I add them together and there's a zero in the sign bit, that means I had an overflow. Now, if I add a negative number to a positive number, the result always is in, going to be in between them. So if I'm, subtracting a neg if I'm subtracting a number from a positive number, the result is always going to be smaller. So if I'm on opposite sides of the zero with two's complement, then I'm going to have a result that is always going to be in range, period. No problems. All right. So let's do some quick examples. And uh, let's, let's go ahead and start. Oh, I don't know. Let's just go ahead and show that mathematically this guy actually works. Let's take uh, this, remember, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 is the 2's complement representation for, what, negative 128, right? So this guy is equal to negative 128. And let's add another binary number to it. Um, let's go ahead and add 0, 0, 1, 0, uh, 0, 1, 1, 0. All right. Now, what does that equal in, in decimal? So we've got a 32 plus a 4, which is 36, 
plus a 1, which is 38. So what we're going to do is we're going to add 38 to 128. 0 plus 0, that's 0. 0 plus 1, that's 1. 0 plus 1, that's 1. 0 plus 0, that's 0. 0 plus 0, that's 0. 0 plus 1, that's 1. 0 plus 0, that's 0. 1 plus 0, that's 1. All right, so there's our result from our addition. Now, what happened is 38 is here on the number line, negative 128 is here, so the result is going to be somewhere in the middle. It's basically going to be 38 up from the bottom. Did it work? Let's see. Now remember, we cannot just simply do the powers of 2 conversion because this is 2's complement representation. 2's complement representation, you first have to look at this sign bit. The sign bit says it's a negative number, so we have to negate it. We have to do that bit flippy thing where we take the inverse, we, co we complement it to figure out what the positive value is, then convert that positive value using, two's con using the powers of 2. So we start on the right-hand side, copy down all the zeros up to and including the first one. After that, we invert everything. So this one becomes a zero, and then we have one, one, zero, one, zero. So this is our positive value. What is that equal to? Well, this is the 64 position. This is the 16 position. That's 80. That's the 8. That's 88. That's the 2 position, that's 90. So this is equal to 90, which means this one is equal to negative 90. Did it work? Well, negative 128 plus 38 equals 90. So it did work. Let's do a couple of other examples. And, and real quick, before we do anything else, what if this were, in fact, unsigned binary? Unsigned binary, we would have a slightly different result. Let's get rid of this and get rid of this. Because in unsigned binary, what you're doing is saying every single one of these bit positions represents a power of 2. And if every one of them represents a power of 2, then converting this guy to, binary, to decimal is just a matter of adding the powers of 2 together. So what we have is 128, right, plus uh, 32, so that's 160 plus 4, 164, plus 2 is 166. This guy right here in unsigned binary is 128, positive 128. So now what we're looking at is if we're doing this as unsigned binary, remember a different representation, we had uh, 128 plus 138, excuse me, plus 38 is 166. Now, my question is, going back to our discussion about overflow, did I have an overflow for either of these operations, for either uh, two's complement or unsigned binary? Two's complement, if these were both positive numbers or if these were both negative numbers and the sign changed after the addition, we had an overflow. Well, one's the, one of these is a negative number, one of these is a positive number which means we can't have an overflow. So there was no overflow, and we actually saw that this worked out correctly when we did the conversion of that using two's complement to decimal. Unsigned binary, was there an overflow? Well, we added this number to this number, and the result did not generate a carry into the ninth position, which means also no overflow. So this worked out. And you can see from the values here that 128, 38, and 166 are all in that range. So they're good. All right. Let's do a couple of other examples. Let's do, how about 1001, 1010, plus 11110010. Just do a quick addition there. All right. So. The addition, once again, I don't have to tell you in order to do the binary addition whether this is unsigned binary or two's complement. I just need to tell you that in order for you to interpret the results. So this is zero plus zero is zero. One plus one is zero. Carry the one. One plus zero plus zero is one. One plus zero is one. One plus one is zero. Carry the one. One plus zero plus one is zero. Carry the one. 1 plus 0 plus 1 is 0, carry the 1. 1 plus 1 plus 1, that is 1, carry the 1. All right. 
Now, the question is, did we have an overflow? Well, in unsigned binary, in unsigned binary, there was a carry into the ninth position, which means I added two positive numbers together and it went beyond. So the unsigned, there was an overflow, and this result is not valid in eight bits. If I had more bits and used that ninth bit position, it would have been okay, but I ran out of bits. Two's complement, is there an overflow? Well, remember, if I add two numbers that are both negative and got a positive number, that meant that I wrapped around on my number line. Got a negative number. So for two's complement, this result is perfectly valid. All right? Let's do another one. How about... Uh, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1 plus 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. All right. 1 plus 0 is 1. 0 plus 0 is 0. 1 0 plus 0 is 0. 1 plus 0 is 1. 0 plus 0 is 0. 1 plus 1 is 0. Carry the 1. 1 plus 1 plus 0 is 0. Carry the 1. 1 plus 0 plus 0 is 1. And we're wondering whether or not we had an unsigned overflow or a twos complement overflow, or neither. Did we have, was everything okay? Well, let's talk about unsigned first. Unsigned, we added these two numbers together, generated an 8-bit result without a carry, so this is valid in unsigned binary. In twos complement, is it valid? Well, this is a positive number, this is a positive number. So I added two positive numbers together, got a negative number. And you can see that that's a negative number by the one in the most significant bit position. So two's complement wasn't able to represent this value because we, had a, we, we added two numbers together and it went beyond what the seven bits in the positive was able to represent. All right? So that's a little, bit into, a little bit of an idea of what overflow looks like whenever it comes to adding unsigned binary and adding into's complement. Next time, we're going to show oh, yet another representation. This one is important, though. It's going to be called bias notation. And what it's important for is an understanding of something called floating point. Whenever we declare variables to be floats or doubles in our, in our uh, code, what does that look like as a pattern of ones and zeros inside of memory? Before we take a look at that, we have to figure out what bias notation it looks, uh, is, and what, how bias notation works.